Hello, this is astrologynewsreport.com with your hosts, David Anton Savage and Ron Berger. Now we go to our third segment of this week's report, People in the News, where we will analyze the Vedic astrology birth chart of a newsworthy person, place, or event. This week we've decided to analyze the birth chart of Shirley Temple, who was born on April 23, 1928, at 9 p.m. in Santa Monica, California. And uh, let me take a moment to reassure our audience that this third section of our show is not just for folks who have passed. It's not like we are trying to establish an obituary column. Quite true, Ron. The title of this section is People in the News, and we generally look at charts of those who are still amongst us. Nonetheless, Ms. Black has just passed away at the age of 85 in her home in Woodside, California. Her early life as a child actor was so stellar, she was so very talented, and became the most famous child actor in history. We just could not resist taking a look at what must be an extraordinary chart. Ah, yes, I see what you're getting at, David. You want to know if her chart confirms a meteoric rise when she was little more than a baby. Yes, such success so early in life is particularly unheard of, and it clearly has to be a very unusual chart, and it has to show planetary patterns for such unusual karma. But, Ron, I'd like to break the rules of how we normally do this. I want to start with the planetary periods first to try and explain how she practically hit the ground running from birth and was done with her movie career by the age of 21, which in itself is a long run for childhood actor. Okay, let's give it a go. Besides, we can fold in the aspects of the chart that show how she had the skills and abilities and even the maturity to match the stardom as we go along. She was born at the very, very end of her Mars major period, and she immediately entered her Rahu major period. Rahu is a planet very much associated with fame and power, and by being in Taurus, Rahu is exalted in her chart. Rahu itself is in the nakshatra of Rohini, which is associated with being alluring, charming, and charismatic. Usually, having a Rahu major period at the beginning of one's life is problematic because Rahu is demonic, Rahu is an alien, an outsider. It takes some maturity to handle the Rahu energy. But in Shirley Temple's case, there are some exceptional circumstances in the chart. Her natal Rahu is in the seventh house, a house where you are seen by the public. It is in Taurus a sign that belongs to Venus, the planet of beauty, the arts, and entertainment. Venus, as the Lord of the Seventh, is placed in the Fifth House, which also signifies arts, creativity, and entertainment. Venus is in its sign of exaltation, Pisces, which bestows on Venus the height of what that planet is capable of. Her Fifth House is further augmented by Jupiter, the ruler of the Fifth in its own sign, Pisces thus occupying its own house. Jupiter, as the planet of increase, further boosts the exalted Venus. And to top it all off, we see that Venus is conjunct electrifying Uranus, the planet of sudden events and unusual circumstances, which, when combined with an exalted planet, can give sudden meteoric rise in life. This is a pretty amazing setup. Yes, and her film career started at the age of three, while she was in the Jupiter sub-period of her Rahu major period. As her Rahu major period unfolded, she would go on to become the top box office draw four years in a row from 1935 through 1938. Clearly, hitting her Rahu period lit up the powerfully positive karma that was embedded in her fifth house of creativity. She enthralled the entire nation during the Great Depression. Even FDR once said, but as long as we have Shirley Temple, we shall get through these hard times. My question to you, Ron, is what were the factors that gave her the preternatural ability to perform so well? Sure, she was very cute, but just being cute would not have cut it. So true, David. You certainly can't just plop your average three-year-old in front of a movie camera and expect that child to take direction, sing, dance, cry, do dialogue, and so on, and do it so well. 
The key is that she has a powerfully placed retrograde Saturn right there in her first house. Saturn is a planet that represents age and experience and thus maturity. Having it in the ascendant makes one mature beyond one's years. Saturn is also the planet of focus and discipline, qualities absolutely essential to the acting profession. What about that K2 in the first house, Ron? You and I are on record multiple times as to how nasty and destructive K2 conjunct Saturn is. It can absolutely destroy things. How does this function for her in her first house? Yes, uh, it is a scary combo that often gives very malefic effects, but we should never lose sight of the fact that each and every planet signifies for a number of things, and it's the job of the astrologer to know all the possibilities for each of the planets. So K2 represents that which was completed in the past life. Any planet associated with K2 in the birth chart also gives a key to what happened in the past life, and this comes through as a talent. Thus, being born with Saturn conjunct K2 in the ascendant means that her past life had Saturn-like qualities. In other words, a positive signification of Saturn plus K2 is that she came into this life with maturity from the get-go. So even if certain combos are mostly very bad, by and large, it is short-sighted to automatically jump to a purely negative conclusion. Yeah, and another point is that K2 is adaptability. K2 can morph into different forms, as can Rahu, its counterpart. K2 actually is surrender. So having it in the ascendant means you can surrender yourself and take on the qualities of some other personality. Again, another essential talent for an actor. And speaking of the ascendant, Mars, the ruler of the chart, is in a Pariyavatna yoga with her powerful first house Saturn. Yes, and having Mars in its placement in the fourth house gives you a sense of self-confidence, which in her case further emphasized her outgoing personality. No problem for her in front of the cameras or taking on a whole room full of adults. What can you say about her rising, Nikshacharan? Anuradha, the lunar sign on the ascendant, is known for being able to associate with anybody. It's called the sign of friendship. Anuradha people specifically connect with groups of people. And by the way, Anuradha is great for foreign travel. And as we know, Shirley Temple Black became a U.S. diplomat in her later years. Her moon, the emotional mind, is in the eighth house of transformation, in the sign of high mental activity, Gemini, the most dualistic of all signs. This helped her range of emotional expression in performing, quick and changeable, very acute. Furthermore, her natal moon resides in the lunar sign of the magical deer, Megalashira, and this nakshatra emphasizes pleasure, which again is a fundamental aspect of entertainment. But how about the tenth house? The tenth house is the house of renown, the house of success and fame. What can we say about that part of her chart? Okay, for Scorpio Ascendant, Leo is the tenth house sign, ruled by the sun, the planet of power. This is what gives Scorpio rising the instinct for status and position. For her chart, the sun is exalted in Aries, in the sixth house of service. And as we've mentioned before, she did provide a great service by uplifting the spirits of the nation during the Great Depression, and as we said, FDR even commented it on it. Yes, and it gets even better when you analyze the chart from the moon. Jupiter becomes the ruler of the tenth in the tenth house of life in public, and it is conjunct her exalted Venus, the planet of entertainment and pleasure. All this in the tenth house of career. Interesting, too, for a child's chart, analyzing from the moon counts for a whole lot. The moon is the significator of childhood. Uh, doubtless, it has been proven that she had some great karma coming through from the past, as well as a whole toolbox of good karma to work with for the life she has just lived. True, we left out a great deal of info about her long life as an adult, which was not lived in obscurity by any means. We simply wanted to answer the question of how a tiny young child came to rule Hollywood and win the hearts of millions. 
Okay, and with that, we conclude this edition of astrologynewsreport.com. Be sure to click in with us next week.